Hi, seventh grade. Welcome back. Today is Wednesday, and today we're gonna to focus on sculpture, and also focus quite a bit on Michelangelo. Uh, and the reason why we focus on Michelangelo a lot is because when we think of Renaissance sculpture, a lot of it was done by Michelangelo. Uh, I'm gonna go over the exit ticket, and then I'm gonna go over the the data. Okay, this is Santa Maria del Fiore. It is in Florence. The dome was done by Brunelleschi. Um, this is Michelangelo's David. Uh, it's about 17 feet uh, tall. It's very realistic. Not realistic because people are not 17 feet. That's not what I mean by that. I mean um, that it looks like a, like a person, right? Um, compared to a medieval statue, this looks much more realistic. It also has a deep emotion. Um, you can see the ribs, right? Very anatomically correct. Um, the person that did the, the David, the Pieta, this is the David and the Pieta is this one. And the, Mo and the Moses is Michelangelo. Which of the following was influenced, was the influence of the Renaissance sculpture? That was the classical period. Remember, the classical period under human, human, the human life, right? Uh, human achievement. Uh, when you look at a, at a Renaissance statue, it looks like a classical statue. If a statue is in relief... It means that it is attached to something behind it. Um, one of the most famous in relief statues is the statue of the U.S. presidents. I think it's in North Dakota or one of those Dakotas. Um, George Washington, Jefferson. The other one is Roosevelt. And is it Lincoln? I don't know the other one. I got to look it up. Okay. It's not Lincoln. I don't think it's Lincoln. It might be Lincoln. I don't know. Um, but in relief means that it is attached. Usually you only see the front of it. Uh, freestanding is this guy. He is freestanding, right? You can see it from all angles. Um, this statue most likely came from the Middle Ages, right? It is not really as realistic as the as the Renaissance or classical period. Um, lacks expression, and it is um, in relief. That does not mean that statues in the Renaissance were not done in relief, right? There's statues that were done in relief in the Renaissance too. Uh, so this is from the Middle Ages. This is the Pieta. The Pieta is the Virgin Mary uh, holding the dead Jesus Christ, right? Uh, solid understanding of anatomy, solid understanding of like how the body falls and even the drapery. And this was done by Michelangelo as well. Uh, in order to create realistic statues, what did the Renaissance sculptures need a good understanding of? They needed a good understanding of the human anatomy, of how the human body looks. Uh, you need to understand how when you stretch your arm, how it looks like that. When you flex your arm, how it looks like this, right? Understanding that there's ribs here, right? Understanding these tendons, the bones, right? Um, Michelangelo was a incredibly talented person. He's probably my favorite Renaissance person as a result because I think that there's a special skill in order to develop this, these statues. Um, next one, the main focus of sculpture during the Middle Ages was uh, the message that is learned, right? Religion is the main, main thing in the Middle Ages. Arts and sculpture during the Renaissance was focused on naturalism and realism. Does that mean that they, own, that they forgot about religion? No. Religion is still really important in the Renaissance. You'll see that some of the most famous works in the Renaissance are religious. Uh, the Last Supper, Michelangelo's David. The ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, the Pieta, the Moses. There are exceptions. The Mona Lisa is not religious, but that's the exception too. Which of the following is in relief? Now, this one is in relief. Why? You see, because it's only seen from the front, right? You see how the, it's attached to the wall? This guy is freestanding. He is not in relief. So these were all done by Michelangelo, incredibly talented person. This church is um, it's called Notre Dame Cathedral. It has fine buttresses. And it's from the Middle Ages. If you said it has a dome, I would like to see it, right? This is uh, before it was burned, before it burned. Here are the flying buttresses. Here are the windows. Here are the pointed arches. You see how the arch is pointed? Um, really, really amazing uh, cathedral in Paris, France. I'm going to go over this because there's a lot more to do. Renaissance sculpture. The purpose of Middle Ages sculpture was to honor God. Right? Uh, or honor some king. 
the purpose of Renaissance sculpture was to show the importance of man and the perfection of the human body, right? Very, two very different things. People are still honoring God, but they're also honoring people. They're also honoring human beings. So uh, classicism, so this is from ancient Rome, right? When we say Greco-Roman, this is Greece, Rome. Secularism means not religious. Humanism, focus on human beings. And symmetry and balance. We're not going to focus on these for now. New techniques in art and sculpture. Study human anatomy to paint and sculpt better. So this week we're focusing on sculpture, but we're also going to be focusing on uh, art in the next couple of days. So here you have a, like a sense of movements. Um, this is the this is another statue of uh, King David. I think this is by Bernini. Uh, you see how there's a sense of movements, like he just tossed uh, the rocks of the Goliath. There's this sense of emotion, right? Uh, again, a good sense of uh, human anatomy. Here, this little kid looks like a little like a little person, right? Like a little kid. Uh, you have emotion, realism. So this is another David. So the statue of David is pretty popular. This is another David by Donatello. This one was made a hundred years before, a hundred years before the David, this David, okay? Um, and you can tell it's, it's earlier. It is a nude. This one is not a nude. Um, it is, um, it is freestanding as well. So this was actually the first free form bronze since Roman times. So this was the first bronze in 1500 years, approximately. So Donatello. Donatello was the first great sculpture of the Renaissance. He's one of the Ninja Turtles. Donatello re uh, revived the uh, classical style of sculpture that were, re were realistic and could be viewed from all sides. So it's not in relief. Donatello Davis was the first large freestanding human sculpture of the Renaissance. So the 15th century is the 1400s, okay? And the 16th century, the 1500s, right? Much more, uh, this one is much more advanced. This one is smaller, the, the one on the left is smaller. Uh, the one on the left is bronze, the one on the right is marble, okay? Michelangelo, we'll focus on this guy a lot. Michelangelo was one of the most famous Renaissance artists. Um, there's only one person that kind of gives them, um, you know, there's a race between these two is him and Da Vinci. Michelangelo was one of the most famous Renaissance artists. He was an artist. He was a painter. He was a sculptor, architect, and poet. A lot of people don't know that he did write poetry as well. Um, but he wanted to be known as a sculptor. That was his true calling, sculpting. Uh, he has some of the most amazing paintings, but sculpting is where his his passion was. He sculpted and painted. His sculptures and paintings showed realism, again, realism, detail of the human body, and expression to show personality and emotion. You can see that looks. this looks like a real person, right? This looks like a grieving mom, right? This looks like a dead person, okay? So very realistic. Michelangelo sculptures Pieta, this is the Pieta, and this is the David, are considered masterpieces. Uh, I have not seen them in person, and I wish I could. So, cla so again, classicism refers to the classical period, Roman Greece. So the Renaissance was a renewed interest in Greek and Roman cultures and values. Michelangelo sculptures of David reflects the blending, the blending combination of religious ideas with Greek and Roman humanistic philosophy. So he is he does this marriage of religion because this guy appears in the Bible. These are our Bible people. And also a blending of, uh, of religion with Greek classical ideas of humanism, the, the importance of people. This is really, really important. So please make sure to review that. Humanism. Humanism's, humanists believe that human reason and logic were as important in understanding in the world as religion and intuition. So human ideas, human power is just as important as religion. 
they said the humanists celebrated the accomplishments of man and looked for inspirations to the ancient Greeks and Romans. So again, those are the humanists, right? Here, Michelangelo's Moses shows the attention paid to anatomy. Again, anatomy, if you don't remember what anatomy is, a study of the human body. And the power of the individual. He is a person. He is an individual. He's not just some, some guy standing there. He is a human being. Okay. The school, so th these pictures got messed up. I don't know why. But this, this one is uh, ancient Greece. And this is from the Middle Ages. Okay? You're not going to write a short paragraph. I just want you to compare them, right? This is from ancient Greece, the left. And the one on the right is from um, the Middle Ages. They're very different, right? This one looks more like an individual. This can be anyone, right? It, they don't have this facial characteristics of, a, of an individual. And now we have... If you look at this, and now we have the same statue from ancient um, Greece, and then Moses up from the Renaissance. Okay, they're much more similar. Again, going with the power of people, of individuality. But this, so this is, this is a marriage of classical plus religion. It's, it's a combination of both because Moses appears in the Old Testament. He freed the Jews. He received the Ten Commandments according to the Old Testament. Okay. I'm going to read an article now because, uh, and I, I will give you access to this article and then we're, we're going to watch a couple of videos. Uh, your exit ticket will have questions that come directly out of this article. Just so you know. Here we go. Synopsis. Synopsis is like the introduction. Michelangelo was born in March 6, 1475. So he was born right as the Europeans were going to begin to explore the New World in Caprizi, Italy. Born to a family of moderate means. Um, that means that they were not poor but also not rich. In the banking business, Michelangelo became an apprentice. Apprentice is someone that uh, is learning from a master. To a painter before studying in the sculpture gardens of the powerful Medici family. So he was connected to them. What followed was a remarkable career as an artist in the Italian Renaissance. Michelangelo was recognized in his own time. So he was recognized in his own time for his artistic mastery. You'll see that a lot of painters, a lot of famous people become famous after they die. Um, very famous after they die. There's this really um, famous uh, Mexican singer, some of you guys might not know because you're too young, called Chalino Sanchez, who became very famous after he, after he died. While he was living, he was, you know, just a regular dude. He was like, you know, just a regular local artist. But after he died, like I knew about him. His works include the David and the Pieta statues and the ceiling of the Rome's Sistine Chapel. You will need to know this one too. Though he remained connected to Florence, his hometown, Michelangelo lived most of his life in Rome, where he died in 1564 at the age of 88. So, um, from Italy. Early life. Painter, sculptor, architect, and poet. Michelangelo was one of the most famous artists of the Italian Renaissance, a period of great artistic and scientific change. He was born Michelangelo di Lodovico Bornorotti Simeone on March 6, 1476, in Caprizi, Italy. He is one of those people that goes by one name because everybody knows Michelangelo. Um, as a young man, he was less interested in schooling than in watching the painters at a nearby churches and drawing what he saw there. Michelangelo's father realized early on that his son had no interest in his family's financial business. So he agreed to let him work as an apprentice at the age of 13 at the workshop of a painter, Domenico, Domenico, Domeni, Domenico Ghirlandaio. This is a uh, guy who's also pretty famous. After a year at the workshop, Michelangelo moved into the palace of Lorenzo the Magnificent of the powerful Medici family to study classical sculpture. So he began studying classical sculptures in the Medici gardens. This was an important time of growth for Michelangelo and it permitted him access to the social elite. So he's able to make connections with different people of Florence exposing him to prominent poets, scholars, and thinkers. So he's being connected, right? He's being, he's learning from, from different people. These influences laid the groundwork for what will become Michelangelo's distinctive style. Muscular precision, precision and realism combined with emotional and expressive beauty. Two reliefs 
so he did do some reliefs two relief sculptures that survive battle of centaurs and madonna of the stairs are testaments to his unique talent at the young age of 16. michelangelo began working as a sculptor in florence in 1495 modeling his style after again modeling copying his style after classical masterpieces he produced a sculpture of cupid Oh, which was artificially aged or make older to make it look like an artifact from the past. Interesting. So he wanted to make it look really old. Cardinal Riario of San Giorgio brought the Cupid sculpture, believing it to be an antique, and demanded his money back when he discovered that he had been fooled. Strangely, in the end, this cardinal was impressed with Michelangelo's work that he let the artist keep the money. The cardinal even invited the artist to Rome, where Michelangelo would live and work for the rest of his life. Here we go. So, he's going to do this image, this statue, at a very young age. And you'll see how old he was. Not long after Michelangelo's relocation to Rome in 1498, his career was helped along by another cardinal, Jean Belhiers de Languru. These are hard words. Michelangelo's Pieta. This is the Pieta. A sculpture of Mary holding the dead Jesus across her lap was erected in the church of the cardinal's tomb. Michelangelo was only 25 years old when he carved it. So he was really young when he did this. I wish I had done this when I was 25. I still have time. The fluidity of the fabric, position of the subject, and the movements of their skin inspire awe in his early spectators. Today, the statue remains an incredibly revered uh, work. Someone actually made a comment that he had not done it. So what he did was he went in and he wrote his name right across it. That's the only um, statue that he's ever signed. He was upset. By the time Michelangelo returned to Florence, he had become something of an art, art star. He was soon hired to complete a statue of David. The biblical, he, he comes from the Bible, and he turned a 17-foot uh, piece of marble into a domini, dominating figure. The vulnerability of the statue's nakedness, humidi, humanity of expression, so he's nude, expression, overall courage, let, uh, made David a prize representative of the city of Florence. Several projects follow, including an ambitious tomb of Pope Ju uh, Julius II. However, the project was interrupted when the Pope asked Michelangelo to switch from sculpting to painting to decorate the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. The project fueled Michelangelo's imagination, and the original plan for 12 apostles morphed into more than 300 figures on the ceiling of the sacred space. Michelangelo completed the 65 five uh, foot ceiling alone spending endless hours lying on his back atop a tall scaffold he guarded the project's secrecy until finally revealing the finished work in 1512 the resulting masterpiece is a magnificent example of renaissance style and incorporate christian symbols and prophecy it includes one of michelangelo's most iconic images the creation of adam a portrayal of god touching the finger man so here you don't i don't know why they didn't include but adam is located here so Michelangelo's brilliant mind and many talents earned him respect with the wealthy and powerful men in Italy. There were some who criticized him. He had, difficult, he had a difficult personality and quick temper, which led to troubled relationships, often with his superiors. Not only got Michelangelo in trouble, but also caused unhappiness to the painter, who constantly strived for perfection but was unable to compromise. He sometimes fell into spells of melancholy, sadness, which he recorded in many of his literary works he, he, he wrote. I am here in great distress and with great physical strain. I have no friends of any kind. He once were, wrote, reminds you of me. Uh, we'll stop there for, for this one. Uh, you're, I'm going to post this in classroom. So make sure that you have access to that. Um, to that. Make sure that you reread it if you need to, okay? Father of Haute Couture. Even though the Mona Lisa may be the most famous artwork in the world, I would argue this bit of painting would be a close second. You've got to check this out. The one he just showed is the, um, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Philanthropy. Additional... Nico Buonarroti Simoni, we'll just call him Michelangelo, was born March 6, 1475, in Caprice, Italy. Buongiorno, or whatever. 
Yeah, he wasn't always the happiest artist, but we'll get back to that later. Michelangelo had four brothers, and his father was a magistrate, and his mother stayed at home with the kids. Now, when Michelangelo was an infant, she became pretty sick. In fact, Michelangelo ended up having to have a wet nurse, uh, so he ended up living with a family of stonecutters. Interestingly, Michelangelo said it was because of this stonecutter wet nurse that he drank in the hammer and chisel. Yeah, not too sure about that one. By the way, did you know Michelangelo didn't want to be known as a painter? In fact, he would probably be insulted if you first referred to him as a painter and not a sculptor. Seriously, you did not just refer to me as painter, did you? Like many 16-year-olds, Michelangelo didn't really care for school, so he often would skip class and head to a nearby church to watch the painters. His family detested art and felt like he was a disgrace to the family. It was definitely not a suitable profession for a man. I think one... It kind of reminds me a little bit of, uh, if you've seen the movie Coco with Miguel, Miguel wants to be a, a musician and his granny, his grandma doesn't want him to be a musician. Kind of reminds you of Michelangelo wanting to be an artist and everyone wanting not him not to be one. Michelangelo started to make a name for himself as an artist. He loved to remind everybody back home. You can tell since he would always sign his letters home with Michelangelo sculptor in Rome. That's right. And don't you forget about it. After realizing that Michelangelo had some artistic talent, his dad encouraged him to find an apprenticeship where he could learn more about art. He went from a painter's workshop to then studying within a powerful, rich, elite family within Florence, the Medici family. Did I mention they were the rulers of Florence? Yeah, they were. Working with this family gave him special privileges. One of those was being able to study dead bodies at the church waiting to be buried. This fueled his passion to understand human anatomy, and unfortunately, the stench and nastiness of the experience started to make him sick. Enough of that. Just a few short years later, when Michelangelo was only 25 years old, it was apparent he had a black belt in sculpture. After relocating to Rome, one of the cardinals within the Catholic Church commissioned him to create a sculpture. Michelangelo, being pretty cocky at this time, said, It will be the most beautiful work in marble Rome had ever seen. A bit confident, right? Actually, it's this sculpture, La Pieta. Have you ever seen this one before? You bet you have. Check it out. Michelangelo sculpted this from a single piece of marble stone. What amazes me is it only took him one year to complete this six foot by six foot sculpture. Have any idea what the, the title means? Well, Pieta simply means pity or compassion, which makes sense considering the, the subject being Christ and his mother Mary. So you're probably asking yourself, uh, what makes this sculpture so incredible? Let me explain. Check out the details in the folds and the ribs and muscles on the body. All this movement, these details create. Look at the left where the mom is. Um, I don't know if I can zoom into this. No, I can't. Uh, what makes this just to see this sculpture. After returning to Rome, he hears about a sculpture that two other artists had abandoned incredibly hard. And trust me, people knew it, which is why many pilgrims would come to Rome just to see this sculpture. If you look at the, where the mom is holding him under his arm, you can set, tell how the skin is being raised uh, right below his head. Sculpture. After returning to Rome, he hears about a sculpture that two other artists had abandoned because it was too difficult. Fueled with confidence from La Pieta, he takes over the job. David took three years to sculpt, probably due to its size of 17 feet. David quickly becomes the pride of Florence, and they even nicknamed it the Giant. After Michelangelo finishes this sculpture, his fame starts to build. In fact, word got around to the Pope, Pope Julius II. Immediately, Pope Julius commissions Michelangelo to create his tomb. This was huge for Michelangelo, especially since all he wanted to do was sculpt. And designing the tomb for the Pope was a huge honor. Michelangelo is so pumped to get going, he starts gathering a team, pouring the stone needed, and, and working on his idea. Of course, right in the middle of this, the Pope turns his attention and funding to rebuild St. Peter's Basilica, which was falling apart. You have to keep in mind that Rome has basically turned into a cow pasture at this point, and the Pope wants to return Rome back to its powerful roots. A very Renaissance idea, I might add. 
Needless to say, he is super frustrated with the Pope. And when he wouldn't pay Michelangelo back for the stone he bought, he heads back to Florence, vowing never to return to Rome. Uh, that is until the Pope sends him a request. Have any idea what he's about to ask him to do? That's right, grab your paintbrush and get back to Rome and paint the Sistine Chapel. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you his response to the Pope. I do not wish to attend to anything but the tomb and not the painting. Believe it or not, no one wanted to paint the Sistine Chapel. This wasn't just about the, the painting process. This also had to do with the chapel itself. Let me school you for a minute. The Sistine Chapel was built in 1477 and was designed to the same biblical proportions as the Temple of Solomon, which made it a fortress. The walls at the base are 10 feet thick, arrow slits added around the outside, and they even added special holes to pour boiling oil out of them. Pretty crazy. I bet you didn't know this, but the chapel had been painted before by a team of artists with 32 popes painted around the room, and then a blue field of stars was added to the ceiling. However, not even 21 years after the construction, cracks start to appear in the vault. Oh, no. To stop this from getting worse, in, in 1504, they placed huge iron rods underneath the floor. Of course, now we have a major problem. The ceiling and the walls must be repaired. After putting some of the Pope's muscle on Michelangelo, he told him he could only work on the tomb if he painted the Sistine Chapel. He reluctantly agrees. Be sure to check out part two, Michelangelo the... So that is the, the, so he's going to paint the ceiling. Uh, let's see if they show it here. Famous artist, Michelangelo. Michelangelo de Lodovico Buonarroti Simoni, known simply as Michelangelo, was an Italian Renaissance sculptor, painter. So here you see parts of uh, the ceiling. This is more like the side. Architect and poet. He was born in 1475 in Caprizi, Italy. When he was still very young, his family returned to Florence, and his mother died when he was only six years old. Michelangelo's father sent him to school, but he was not very interested in learning what was taught there. All he wanted to do was paint and become an artist. So this is a relief, in relief. You see how it, you only see it from the front, there's no back to it. In 1488, when he was 13 years old, Michelangelo was apprenticed to an artist, Domenico Ghirlandaio, and in 1490 he was sent to continue his training with the powerful Medici family. Over the next few years, he began producing sculptures and honing his skills. This is, um, in 1496, so Michelangelo moved to Rome. While there, he was commissioned to create a statue of Jesus after he was crucified laying in the lap of his mother, Mary. Michelangelo was 24 years old when he completed this statue, called Pietà, which is regarded as one of the greatest masterpieces of sculpture in the history of the world. Michelangelo returned to Florence and accepted another commission, to create a statue of David from a huge block of marble. He worked on the sculpture for more than two years. When it was finished, the statue of David was more than 17 feet or 5 meters tall and weighed around 6 tons. Today, David is Michelangelo's most famous sculpture. In so again, combination of religion and classical ideas. In 1905, the newly elected Pope Julius II invited Michelangelo to return to Rome to create his tomb, a project he worked on off and on for the next 40 years. Three years later, he received another commission when the Pope asked him to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Here it is. Michelangelo considered himself a sculptor and not a... So this is the ceiling. Uh, it is a ceiling that has um, images from the Old Testament, like the Great Flood, um, the creation of Adam, creation of Eve, the expulsion of, of the two from Eden, the Garden of Eden. ...painter and did not want to take the job but he could not refuse the Pope. Here in the middle, you see the creation of Adam. Uh, the, the God is pointing to, uh, you see how they're touching? That's uh, the creation of Adam. The work in the Sistine Chapel took four years to complete and was more than 134 feet or 41 meters in length and 46 feet or 14 meters in width. 
Michelangelo painted a total of 343 figures depicting stories from the Bible, including the creation of Adam, which is one of the most famous paintings in history. In Christianity, Adam is the first man, and, and uh, Eve is the first woman, and God creates them. Painting on a ceiling was difficult. Michelangelo had to work on a scaffolding that brought him high enough to reach it. Contrary to popular belief, he did not lie down to work, but stood and painted above his head. After his work in the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo was considered a great artist. He made many statues, paintings, drawings, and frescoes. He wrote hundreds of poems. He was also an architect and designed the dome of St. Peter's Basilica. There's this term called uh, Renaissance man, of someone that is, has many different skills. Um, da Vinci is considered a Renaissance man because he had many different skills or good at different skills. And so is Leonardo, I mean uh, Michelangelo, because he had so many skills. He's a writer, he was a sculptor, painter, architect, engineer. He helped design this dome as well. Michelangelo was so famous that there were two biographies of him published while he was still alive. He died in 1564 at the age of 88, only three weeks before his 89th birthday. Today Michelangelo is considered one of the foremost artists of the High Renaissance, alongside Raphael and Leonardo da Vinci. He had a profound impact on the artists that followed him and continues to be studied today. His works are among the most famous and widely reproduced in history. I hope you enjoyed learning about the famous artist. Please take your exit ticket. Please try to get at least 70% on the video. I will see you guys soon.